Thank you very much. Mike Costa with us live, and I doubt seriously if any of us tonight can understand the pain that the victims' families are going through after this today. Well, after more than a two-week strike, Teamsters are celebrating this evening as they prepare to go back to work tomorrow for UPS. And businesses nationwide are breathing a sigh of relief as both sides came to an agreement on a five-year contract deal. Today, UPS leader chairman Jim Kelly says, let's get back to business. Uh, this was a difficult situation for all of us. We want to put it behind us. We want to go forward. We want to deal with our customers and continue with our business. Uh, the strike uh, tomorrow will be ancient history. Kelly also says having a five-year contract is important to UPS, but it is longer than the union wanted. Now, the Teamsters did gain some ground, however, with more full-time jobs, a pension plan, and pay raises for both full- and part-time workers. The union must now vote on the proposed deal. The ballots will be issued by mail, and it will likely take a month before that contract is formally ratified. Well, Dan, for two weeks now, we have introduced you to those affected by the UPS strike. The impact uh, was widespread. We all know that. And as NBC24's Nora Murray tells us, so is the feeling of relief. Yesterday was my birthday, and that was a great birthday gift for me. For two weeks, 48-year-old Cheryl Jesse walked the line, and so did the 11-year-old grandson she's raising. But now she's sitting and smiling. School starting. Kids need supplies, clothes, things like that, so I'm very happy. Hopefully things will go back to normal. But not immediately. UPS claims to move at the speed of business. But other companies are quickly picking up customers, like Hex Direct Mail and Printing. When the strike started, they used DHL Worldwide Express. Now 20% of their work will stay there. We're going to continue to uh, use them, or at least give them the opportunity to be to compete with UPS for our business. DHL may have picked up a few new customers, but the U.S. Postal Service says it was the only game in town. Business at Toledo's main branch doubled, forcing them to pitch a tent in the parking lot because they ran out of floor space inside. The tent will stay up for about a week, but strikers hope theirs will soon come down. They're just waiting for a sign from the union. Once that comes, Mike Mitchell will climb back into his truck but he won't abandon McDonald's. The owners helped him during the strike with a part-time job. We just made a backbone for, for all part-time people in the country. We were basically made history. In Maumee, Nora Murray, NBC 24 News. Thank you, Nora. Well, we're going to discuss tonight uh, with the UPS uh, director, Chuck Weinblatt. He is a director, actually, of organizational development at the University of Toledo. He can discuss with us tonight the, uh, the agreement with UPS. He is also a former education coordinator for UAW Chrysler. That's right. Mr. Weinblatt is going to join us now in the newsroom. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we'd like to talk a little bit about the UPS strike. You know, a lot of people are saying the Teamsters did get most of what they wanted. Now, what would your assessment of that be? I think they did get a lot of what they wanted. My concern is that they may have wanted some of the wrong things. Let me begin by saying that there are two paradigms today in labor management contract relations. The old paradigm, which the Teamsters seem to be following, has um, labor unions saying to management, um, let's, uh, let's talk about this agreement. Uh, you run the company, and we'll argue about how much you're going to pay our members. The new paradigm for labor management contract negotiations has the union saying, let's work as partners strategically and we'll collaborate together and share the profits. Uh, there are some concerns if you read between the lines of this contract. It looks as though 10,000 new jobs will be created for the Teamsters. However, UPS will have the ability to shift about 9,000 workers from hourly to full-time employees. So there may be no more than 1,000 new names and faces as Teamsters members. Furthermore, during the strike itself, UPS lost market share. By their own accounts, they've lost at least 5% of the market that will not return. That's customers who've gone to another carrier and will remain with that carrier rather than going back to UPS. The result of that is probably going to be layoffs, as many as 15,000 layoffs. Chuck. So while the Teamsters expect a 10,000 job gain, they could be looking at as much as a 5,000 job loss. Chuck, Toledo, we know, is a strong union town. What does this agreement say about the state of unions today? 
Well, the, the Toledo area is dominated by the UAW, and the UAW operates in the second more progressive paradigm where they partner with uh, um, GM, Ford, and Chrysler. If you walk into any General Motors, Ford, or Chrysler facility in Northwest Ohio, you'll find self-directed work teams and you'll find joint UAW management teams that make decisions about some important things like product quality improvement, health and safety, um, and the, the issues about um, empowerment, which is leading to the fact that UAW represented employees are slowly gaining the power to actually have the hourly employees make decisions on the spot, on the floor, about quality and productivity. Okay, Chuck, thank you for your insight. We do appreciate you joining us tonight. You're welcome. Although they are not quite back to work, striking UPS workers took time out today to give blood. The workers went to Lot Industries in Maumee for a Red Cross blood drive. While there is not a blood emergency right now, Red Cross officials say they are in need of O and B blood types. So striking UPS workers volunteered to help. The Red Cross currently has a two-day blood supply, and that is one day less than normal. Well, five attacks since the middle of June have police on the lookout for a serial rapist. Dan, the latest attack in Sylvania may have given cops the first accurate description of the man. NBC 24's Christian Captain reports.